Yes, I, I love what you're saying, Jay, and, I, and I, I, it's really interesting because I feel like there's a distinction that we're, we're kind of um, honing in on here, which is that often there's the, the unrealistic, perfectionistic expectation, right, of, of what it means to, some, to have your shit together, in, in your words, right? But that's, that's sort of a, an initial misunderstanding or an understandable kind of from the outside, like almost superficial without too much judgment on that word, right? In, uh, interpretation of something else that's actually much, much more real and, and that has to do with honoring the journey, honoring the process. And that there really is a process through which we come to a place of being more resilient of being better able to regulate our own internal experience and stay present with ourselves, to be a good friend to ourselves, um, to be in a way, if for many of us, the, the parent that we maybe didn't have or, or some of the qualities of the parent that we wish we'd had. Um, and that the work on the mat or, or on the yoga mat or on the meditation cushion very often is about learning how to stay with ourselves through the changing weather, through the ups and downs, through how, how we're perceiving ourselves and the judgments that we're making and the feelings we're having and how able we, we are to tolerate those feelings. Um, and in a way, that's, that's, the, the, that's what's underneath the hood, right? That's the inner workings of what before we imagined some kind of like liberated enlightenment might be, that it's actually this very human sort of capacity. Yeah, and as you're saying that, I'm I'm thinking back to my 21 year old self that mm. did the teacher training, and and you know how much information I got about the postures and the philosophy and the like the huge transformational uh, possibilities of this practice, and you know it's all kind of this like oh yeah you know and um <laughs> and and going back and wishing. God, wishing that I had had someone teach me how to be a friend to myself. Mm. What, like those words that you just use, like, oh, that one hit me because it's like, that's what I needed at that time. That's what would have made me a happier person. It's what would have made my teaching more grounded and mm -hmm. more connected. And um, I mean, that's what I, that is what I love the most about our teacher training. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think we each bring such an incredible mm -hmm. set of, um, tools and information and, and so much learning, but the, the thing that we're all three of us so committed to is like the number one thing that we're teaching is self-regulation. Number one thing that we're teaching is how do you stay? How do you stay with yourself? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No matter what. And yeah. I think that is, so when people come to me and say, you know, I'm not this enough to do this, or once I do this, I'm going to turn into this shining star of a rock star yoga teacher. It's like, no, neither. <laughs> yeah. You're going to become you. Mm. And, and, and this process and, and this, this practice of teaching, one of the most confronting ways to become you mm. that, I, that I've ever experienced um, in the sense that it's, it's, uh, it's really, really easy to kind of flip off to either side to I'm not enough or look at me, look how amazing I am. And to, mm -hmm. to kind of use this practice of teaching to walk this narrower mm -hmm. line of just how do I stay? How do I stay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it reminds me of, of Pema Chodron. I, I know you like Pema Chodron as well, the, the American-born uh, Tibetan Buddhist teacher. Uh, you know, she talks about mindfulness as being like training a puppy. Mm -hmm. That it's that, and then that there's no need to be harsh, and uh, you're basically trying to take a mind that is that tends to be all over the place and excitable and reactive in the same way that a puppy is, and you're basically teaching the puppy to stay, mm -hmm. sit, stay. No, 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 no. Come back now. Now be here. And, and I love that, you know, she says when the, when the puppy doesn't, doesn't do what you want it to do, you know, uh, getting mad and, and, and kicking the puppy across the floor is, is, is not good. It's not helpful and you shouldn't do that to yourself either. Um, how, do you, how do you stay? 
and keep staying. And, and I think so often, you know, one of the topics that, that you and I bring up in, in our teacher training from time to time is spiritual bypass. And so often in a, in a subculture, in the new age spiritual subculture, there, there's um, a, a, often a strong tendency towards spiritual bypass, which is, which is in a way to get away, to escape. Instead of learning how to stay and using compassionate, um, effective skills to be with, to be a good friend to yourself, as we've been saying, there's this tendency to want to run and escape. And, and I think the tendency to idealize is part of that. To say, oh, well, I found this teacher who is perfect and they found a way that I can escape from the vulnerability and the uncertainty and the, and the anguish of being a human being who needs others and who has desires and is imperfect. Um, and, and that's, that's what I love about right, the work that we're what doing I is, that... is really offering an alternative. Yeah. And, and I would say that that the spiritual bypassing goes hand in hand with thinking that once I get to be a teacher, I will be the anointed one, you know, yeah. because I know at that point in my life, um, in my early twenties, that's how I was dealing with the challenges of my life. I was spiritually bypassing and saying, you know, everything is meant to be and, mm -hmm. and I'm learning so much and I, am you know, um, that goes along with that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, as opposed to just really feeling deeply the very human challenges that I was going through. And so I think, you know, the, those kind of teachers, the anointed ones that are spiritually bypassing are the ones that are then passing on that, the teaching of like, oh, look, I can get around all my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, I don't yeah. think anyone feels connected and seen and really truly um, held in, in that kind of practice. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. So I, I, wonder, I wonder how we can wrap this up in terms of a message that we might have for aspiring teachers or for new teachers around this particular theme. Yeah, I mean, I guess, and just off the cuff right now thinking about it, it's mm -hmm. the, you know, the reef, if, if you are thinking of becoming a teacher and you find yourself in this um, concern of I'm not enough mm -hmm. or, um, or I'll get to be more than I ever dreamed I could be mm. because of this. Um, to reframe that and, and think of this as a journey of learning how to befriend yourself, mm. learning how to um, be in your own body as it is and, mm. and because of that presence, mm -hmm. be able to share with depth and, um, and, and, and expertise mm. that, that comes from not, uh, you know, being more than anyone else, mm -hmm. but comes from being more yourself than you've ever been. Uh, and that that's really what we're, that's really what we are um, fostering, is how do you be mm -hmm. more yourself mm -hmm. and offer from that place. Yeah. And then in that way, it doesn't even matter if you ever go on to teach. This could just simply be a, you know, a teacher training in in using the tools of yoga mm -hmm. and mindfulness to to really come back home to yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that. Really nice talking with you about this, Jay. Yeah, I always yeah. enjoy our conversations. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you.